favorite class, as most people who follow me on Twitter would know, is the Necromancer. Uh, I love having a whole bunch of an army of the dead to do all of my bidding and fight all the fights for me and just let me collect the loot. Uh, and the reason I said people who don't follow me on Twitter would know is because I just got a necromancer tattoo on my left arm. <laughs> I mean, if I was a new player in Diablo, I think the big thing is just, you know, Diablo is just fun. And what's great is that Diablo 4 takes place 50 years after Diablo 3. And so there's not that t close a connection between the two games. So if you've never played a Diablo game before, Diablo 4 is a great one to start with. Uh, and really it's just about getting comfortable with what is the class you want to play. What's your power fantasy? Everybody has a power fantasy. Do I want to be a barbarian? Do I want to be a druid and, and master the elements and change into a were or a werewolf? Or am I want to be a sorcerer with magic, you know, mastering the elements or a rogue? And, uh, you know, so there, there's lots of things to play into that, but it's just fun to go through and as you're playing and defeating monsters, you're getting more and more powerful. And so what you really want to do is walk through that skill tree, adding new skills and just having fun, you know, defeating demons. So if I was a new player, that's really what you want to focus on. It's a, it's a really great hack and slash fun, dungeon crawling, killing demons, looking for powerful loot. Playing D4 on controller is interesting because you can play it obviously for console, but also we support controller on PC. And it really changes the dynamic about how you play Diablo because when you think about it on PC with a mouse and keyboard, you're sort of this benevolent being guiding this character on screen. So you say, go here, go here, go here, um, which is fun and great. But what I love about the controller play is it's direct control, which means it's actually you are the character. You're not guiding the character, you are the character. Uh, and so, you know, turn left, turn right, you have access to all your skills on your buttons immediately in your hands. And so we've seen by, you know, bringing D2R to console uh, with controller, bringing Diablo 3 to console with controller, uh, that Diablo is really great to play with controller, whether you're playing on PC or console. Um, basically, we have both cross-play and cross-progression. And so what does that mean? It means that you can play the game on console, whether PlayStation or Xbox, or PC, and that means you can play with your friends and on across all those platforms. So you can have a party of actually a PC player and a PlayStation player and an Xbox player, and you can all play together, and that's cross-play. And cross-progression is really around this idea that um, you can move between platforms. So let's say you want to play on your PC at work. I'm not saying you do that, but maybe I might do that. Um, and then, but when you go home, you want to fire up your console in front of a big television and you can, your progress will pick up exactly where you left off. So you have both of those things available to you. And even from the point of couch co-op, so let's say you're playing couch co-op on console and you know, let's say you're on your PS5 and you have two people on the couch playing, they can actually join up in a party with an Xbox player and a PC player into their party of four as well. So there really is no limitation between sort of how to mix and match the platforms we support. Talking about the end game in Diablo 4, well, it, we're really excited that as part of the mainline uh, Diablo games, Diablo 4 is the first to actually ship with, a main, uh, with an end game you know, at launch. Uh, and what that really means is that's the time after you're done with the campaign and there's a lot to do. We have a lot of things you can play. We have the Whispers of the Dead, which is essentially like a bounty system that you can go and collect bounties for big rewards. We have Helltide, which is where different parts of the map become much more difficult, but also have much greater rewards and you can actually target the types of rewards you're looking for. We have Nightmare Dungeons. So there's over a hundred dungeons in Sanctuary and you can, through these sort of keys that we call sigils, you can get them to be harder and harder with different aspects that change how they play, the type of monsters, sort of different buffs and debuffs. Uh, and so it makes it really exciting to, to play and you can keep going up and up and up, which again, the higher the difficulty, the higher the rewards. Uh, and then we also have PVP. Uh, so there are two fields of hatred in Sanctuary where you can go in and fight other players for uh, you know, unique custom uh, cosmetics, which is exciting. And all that sort of builds towards our level cap. So uh, in the game, you have a cap of level 100, but the, uh, and there's a boss waiting for you. So there's a level 100 boss that you have to prove that you can beat. And so part of that end game is building your way up so you can actually show your mastery of your class to be able to defeat that level 100 boss. Giving you a D4 secret. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not really so much of a secret as a big, people really haven't had access to it or seen much about it because of where it's placed. So every class has a specialization or a special mechanic unique to that class. Um, and the Druid is one of those. And, but the Druid's specialization has to do about 
um, their druidic power and where that exists, which is in Skosland, and Skosland is outside of the beta that we recently had. And so not everyone has been able to see that specialization. And so I thought I'd just give you a brief glimpse into it. So the druid is able to gain these benefits by getting attuned to different animal spirits. So once you get to a high enough level and once you make the trek to Skosland, you'll be able to go and as you're killing monsters, you're earning favor for those spirits. And when you return that favor to them, you begin to unlock different abilities that then you can put onto your druid. And so, you know, you have the Book of the Dead with the Necromancer and you have the enchantment system for the sorceress and you have the weapon expertise system for the barbarian um, and you have the the sort of unique combo skills that you have for the rogue. And so everything, every class has their own one, but no one's really seen the druid one yet because it's outside of the beta. So um, hopefully you'll try the druid when you play Diablo 4 and you know, take advantage of those spirit animals.